Thank you for the introduction. Like she said, my name is Rachel, and I am in my senior year here at Adams State. And right now I'm in my senior block of the education program, which means that I'm taking my final classes before I go out into the field full time and do student teaching in the fall. And then I'll be set to graduate in December. I am an elementary education major, which means that I will be certified to teach kindergarten through sixth grade when I complete my degree here at Adams State. And I'm Maddie, and I will be graduating this May, so I'm just one step ahead of Rachel. Um, and I will be getting my bachelor's in secondary English education. I'm currently student teaching in Antonito. I teach seventh and ninth through 12th grade English. So the project that we are presenting to you today is called FUSE. And this project started in the fall of 2014 in our methods of teaching secondary English class that we both took in the fall. And our project has come to fruition this spring. So our final project is this booklet, which we created and had printed and we're going to distribute it across the San Luis Valley, and we're going to give it to the organizations that helped us create this booklet. We're also going to give it to the education department here at Adams State so they can distribute this book to their students in all of their classes. So it's important to understand how we came to FUSE. FUSE stands for fostering, uniting, serving, and educating. These are all key parts of service learning. And we wanted to use this acronym because we are fusing together various communities. Our goal is to integrate community service learning at the collegiate level as well as in K-12 education. So we'll start this afternoon with a quote that pretty much is the backbone of our whole project. This kind of drove what we wanted to hit when we completed our project and it pretty much sets the tone for what we're going to be talking about today. And it says, we cannot seek achievement for ourselves and forget about progress and prosperity for our community. Our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and needs of others for their sakes and for our own. And that quote is by Cesar Chavez, which is kind of fitting because this week is actually Cesar Chavez week. And we did not plan that, but it worked out well for us. <laughs> um, we featured this quote on the back of our book, not only because he is such a big influence, in the San Luis Valley, but also because it embodies the importance of establishing relevancy in education. By creating this connection between the community and the classrooms, we are strengthening the impact that we can have on our students. Our ultimate goal was to create that, an avenue for education majors while connecting with at-risk youth of the San Luis Valley. And the first connection, and perhaps one of the most important ones we wanted to establish, was within the Adams State community. We achieved this by partnering with Dr. Anicia Alvarez's first, interest, first year interest group, or FIG students, for education. Uh, this class is comprised of freshmen exploring the various facets of education. Our role, as clearly wise seasoned 20 something year olds, was to not only serve as mentors, but to also show the freshman students the opportunities and the realities of becoming a teacher. So myself and Manny, along with Laurel Heimstra, Jesse Burnett, and Adriana Mestis, made up the Methods of Teaching Secondary English class in the fall, and that was taught by Professor Kathleen Chavez. So what we did was we sat down as a group and we created a project timeline to achieve our objectives. We knew we wanted to create a booklet that we could give out to families in the Valley who don't have access to internet, and they could then use that booklet as a resource to learn about all of the programs and opportunities available to help youth and their families in the San Luis Valley. Then we partnered with the FIG class and we broke up into small teams within that class. So the FIG class is made up of Neva Archuleta, Morgan Zansky, Hannah Payne, Victoria Wirt, Ashley Lopez, Desiree Anderson, Lydia King, and Ali Miller. And so all of these freshmen contributed to the project under the direction of Dr. Anicia Alvarez. And once we had solidified our relationship with these freshmen, or at least they weren't afraid of us anymore, we were able to go out into the community and begin interviewing the organizations that we selected. So we went out and talked to these groups about the services that they provide for students. And the wonderful part about this project is really the autonomous nature of it. We were able to get out of the classroom, go into the community, and work on a project that we designed and created ourselves and along with the other students in the class. As a class, we've all spent a lot of time out in the field 
in schools of all levels all across the San Luis Valley. One of the great things about the education department here at Adams State is from the very first class you take, they put you out in the field. So you could be spending an hour all the way up to a day in a K through 12 environment, sitting in a classroom with a teacher who does that job day to day, and you interact with real students and you really have a stronger understanding of what it is you are going to be doing when you graduate from Adams State. So you learn tips and tricks, you get lesson plans that you might then take to your future classroom. And so we, from this experience, from working with all of these kids, we've really gained an understanding of the importance of education and having resources for all students, but especially for those students who are living in poverty or who might not have the best home life and just don't have the adequate support at home. And I can tell you, just from this semester of teaching, nothing is worse than when you have a student who is coming to you and they're going home at night not having a meal to eat because their parents are in jail or because their parents are working four jobs just to support them and they're going home to take care of their four other siblings. And so as a response to this need, we determined that the organizations of La Puente, Adelante, PALS, Boys and Girls Club, Early Childhood Council, WIC, and the Nurse Family Partnership are all well equipped to support these students. And so to kind of begin this process, the FIC students interviewed key members of these groups and compiled information into descriptions to use for our final product. And with their writing, we designed our booklet, which we hope to be distributed across the entire San Luis Valley, if not, you know, the entire nation. <laughs> so, I, you are all very well aware of this, but it is 4.30 on a Friday. So at this point, you're probably asking, why am I sitting here? Why is this important? Why do we need community service learning projects? And it, we need it because it's forcing ourselves, as well as our students, to emerge into the greater community, go beyond the classroom. And um, by doing this, we are not only contributing to society, but we are instilling a sense of importance within our students. So one of the organizations that we visited was PALS, and that's where this picture was taken. So this little girl is one of the girls that attends PALS, and then the two other ladies pictured with her helped create this book. And PALS is a program for, it's an after school and summer program for elementary aged kids. And some of these kids don't necessarily have the best home lives. Like Maddie said, their parents might be busy a lot, and so PALS gives them the opportunity to have another stable environment outside of their regular classroom. Somewhere they can go and they do art projects and they do a lot of different things with PALS and spend some time there. One of the things that they talked about when we went to interview the people at PALS was that they like to take their students out on service projects. So they'll take them out into the community and do things like a community cleanup or something like that. And they said that this is really important to those kids because even though they're young, they still are a contributing member of this community. And that by doing this, by going out into the community and getting involved, they have had such, it's had such a great impact on the way they view themselves and their relationship with the community. They're proud of what they do, they're proud to be a part of Alamosa, and they're proud to be a part of PALS. So, Though we did this project, though we completed our Fuse book as part of a class project, we don't want it to be a one and done kind of thing. Instead, we want the idea of community service learning to permeate the culture of Adams State. We want future methods of teaching secondary English classes to continue on the work that we started, and we also would encourage other classes around Adams State to find something that they're passionate about, pick a project, do something that goes outside of your classroom walls, and just go out there and get involved with this community. So this whole process is cyclic, which means that it starts here at Adams State with what we do and learn in the classroom. And then we can take it out into the K-12 setting and work on this with our own kids and give back to the community, which really creates a more sustainable society. Um, we also included another quote in our book which really helps hammer home that message. So I will practice my teacher reading skills and read you that quote from our book. And it says, no other investment yields as great a return as the investment in education. An educated workforce is the foundation of every community and the future of every economy. 
and that is by Brad Henry. So now, as we are almost completing our degree, as we move forward into our own classrooms and begin our long-awaited careers as teachers, we are striving to incorporate the idea of service learning into our own classrooms with our own students. And fortunately, fortunately for me, I have the opportunity this semester to actually do that. And one of my biggest obstacles while student teaching thus far has been getting my seniors to do absolutely anything at all. Um, as you can see in this picture, this is just a few of my seniors, they are quite content laying around doing nothing all day, every day. Um, so I wanted to incorporate community service into my own classroom and attempt to kind of kill off this senioritis. Um, it was essential that my students had ownership over this project. They had to be invested in it or it wasn't going to be successful. So they created their own ideas, compiled them, and then came to a consensus as to what they would like to do. Unsurprisingly, um, as a class, they decided they would like to throw out free condoms. Um, <laughs> as a teacher, I said no. Um, <laughs> instead, we took a more appropriate route. We are now working on raising money for the Children's Hospital in Colorado Springs. We're doing this by having a hat week where you bring your hat to school, you bring $2, you can wear your hat, and all our proceeds will go to the Children's Hospital. We're also working on orchestrating a city cleanup with the younger students, as well as with community members, because it's important to emphasize that we're parts of multiple communities. We're part of the greater community, but there's also your local community, and how you can affect it is important for them to understand. Um, I was worried at first that my students weren't going to be receptive. I mean, after all, they're seniors, and it is work, and that's always a negative. However, it's been an extremely rewarding experience seeing them come into class every single day excited to learn, and they have taken great pride in this. Um, and to me, that's the sum summation of this project. Taking what we have got from our Adams State experience and into our own classrooms to enrich the lives of our students Taking the park exam, writing an essay about Shakespeare, or learning your math facts are all essential, but they, don't, but they don't dive into the heart of education. Our job is to mold students that are independent thinkers who are healthy in both mind and spirit and have a sense of responsibility for the community around them. We are in the business of educating the whole student, not just a part. We are preparing them for the lives outside of our classrooms. That is what really matters. And of course, none of this would have been possible without the tremendous support we have received. Um, we'd like to extend a thank you to Dr. Michael Mumper and his department for providing all of the funding for our publication, as well as to the ASU Print Shop for actually printing it, um, and also all of the organizations and their employees for giving, them, giving us the time, taking you know, time to actually sit down and work with our freshman students and do the interviews, as well for, as everything they do for our students out in the community. We'd also like to thank the Adams State University Education and English Departments for supporting us through this process and really help, helping us to achieve our goal. Uh, we were really proud of what we were able to create through this collaboration and we're excited for what the future may hold. We have some copies of our book that we made if anyone is interested in coming to get one. And then other than that, are there any questions? So you, you mentioned the HAT project, you mm -hmm. the hospital in the spring, and you listed a lot of uh, local nonprofits here in the Valley. You had an opportunity to do this again. Are there some projects that you're really excited about that you want to do in the classroom? With my kids? Well, some of the ideas they came up with that I was really excited about and kind of bummed we didn't end up doing. Um, one was there's and the seniors in Antonito, there's not much support for them, and they wanted to hold, host a senior prom for them, which was one of their ideas. They also wanted to come to the valley, actually work with La Puente, um, do the soup kitchen, all of that, and create little donation boxes full of essentials and stuff. And I'd like to do that again. Hopefully we can do that again. Um, it's one of those things that we can only do so many projects in a semester. So. You mentioned uh, hoping to be able to spread this to other departments and other areas outside of education. Mm -hmm. uh, what would your advice or tips be to somebody in one of those departments on how to incorporate services? 
I think it all just comes down to finding something that you're passionate about because we knew that this was an issue that meant a lot to us, making sure that these students have places to go after school or have places to go that might just help them on rough days or just be that um, support for them. So I think it's all about finding something that you're interested in, going and looking around. There's so much that this community has to offer. There's a lot of different groups. So just find something here that is of interest to you and pertains to whatever it is that you're studying. And you just roll with it, see where it can go. Well, I know in Antonito, what they have been doing, at least with the little, little ones, which I stay away from, you know, um, <laughs> what they've been doing with them is doing things like, it's more like, you know, partnerships, like you have the fourth graders are partnering with the kindergartners. So it's more close community. It's more within the school. Um, just because, you know, taking 25 elementary kids out into the community might not be feasible. Um, with my seventh graders, uh, they are currently working on, and they're, they're still very young, but they're working on newspapers to help raise awareness about bullying. And so things like that. Um, I think once they get older, you're able to expand your horizons, but definitely it's still possible to do it in the elementary level. And I think those kids, like, you can challenge them and they will amaze you with all of the things that they can do. So I've seen even at Alamosa Elementary, they have this thing called the Buddy Bench that they came up with. And what the Buddy Bench is, is that um, it's a bench that they have out on the playground. And so if someone doesn't have anyone to play with or they're kind of lonely, they can go and sit on the Buddy Bench. And if you see someone sitting on the Buddy Bench, you go over and you say, hey, come play on the swings with me or something like that. So it's just those little projects that make a difference in their world. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing, but it makes a difference to someone in their school. And so I think it's very possible to have that happen with the kids. Especially if it's something that they generate the idea themselves, then they're invested in it. And you can go really far with that. Yeah. Just, just a quick question. Did you say you've been just working with us the, the last year, basically? This started, um, we took the, our methods of secondary English class this fall semester, this last fall. And we began it during the fall semester. We had it essentially completed by the end of the fall semester, and we just got it printed this okay. spring, so. Are there any other questions? Thank you guys for coming out this afternoon. Thank you.